So we are dealing with the trig quiz number three preview, mainly graphing. Um, so with that in mind, uh, a quick reminder on a couple of things. When we're working through the order of graphing, because we've got four different possibilities here that can be changing things. We've got our vertical shift, which again could be at this end as well, our amplitude, our period that we're dealing with, the B value helps me with that, and then the horizontal shift, our, our left and right. And so when we're working on these, and we've talked about this before, I've got it on the front board there too, but I'll, I'll keep it here so we've got a, a record of it. This is the order we're going to take these in when we're trying to figure things out. These first two things are going to have to do with what values are on our x-axis, what our angle measures are going to be. And then the last two are both going to have to do with, hey, is it how high is it stretching? How high is the whole graph like being picked up and shifted? And so on with that. So I'm going to be referencing this as we're working through some of this. So first things first, we'll, we'll label stuff. This first one, I want to get this out of the way right away. I understand there is not a vertical shift, okay? That is an amplitude value or an A value. So you're like, so it's none. Not true. Yes, it's true that there is not a vertical shift, but I will always still have a center line. It just stays at zero, okay? So when you're asked for center line, always got to have something in there. Y equals something. Our amplitude again here, our A value we're going to be multiplying by is negative 4. Technically, again, amplitude is typically distance. You could just put 4 in there. I just usually put that to remind myself, hey, I'm going to be multiplying my values by this negative value, so it's going to flip my graph. My period, since that is typically going to be 2 pi over b, and my b value is 1, there's nothing here in front of x. It's just going to be a regular old 2 pi. And again, phase shift, if there was a horizontal shift, which there is not, because I see no parentheses here, that one, we actually can just put none. Because if there isn't one, nothing's going to move. So we're like, okay, I'm going to move this up a little, move this down here, and probably move it where I'm not having my big self in front of it. There we go. So luckily, or nicely for us on this first one, we've just got our regular old period which at this point, I should know those five values for sine and cosine anyway that I've got up on the front board. So this should be, oops, too high. This shouldn't be an issue on this one. So I look, and the only thing I'm really going to have to concern myself with is that my amplitude, instead of going to 1 and negative 1 as I work my way through here, is going to be to 4 and negative 4. So if I need to remind myself a little bit of this, and I'm sitting here going, okay, so this is cosine. So cosine normally starts at the top because it makes that U shape. So normally, that's what my cosine values would look like is I went from 0 to 2 pi, but I'm multiplying them all by negative 4. So, if you need to play the little side work game here, there is nothing wrong with that whatsoever, because now I am ready to rock and roll. So a couple other things to mention on this first one, because I didn't read through all the directions when we first started. For each of the following, name the center line vertical shift. Okay, we did. The amplitude, yep. The period, yep. Phase shift, yep. Then graph one period of the function described. Okay, that's fine. Making sure to label five ordered pairs for each graph. Okay, here's all I'm saying with that. 
I need to make sure that your axes are labeled and that I can clearly tell where the values are and where you're putting your points. Because it doesn't mean you have to literally put like a coordinate point for every single one of these. Because what I've had people do in the past is they're like, draw me the picture, and they like won't label these things at all. And I'm like, okay, you can show me what it looks like, but that's not really accurate. So just make sure you're accurate with, with describing where everything's at. That one's good. So I get to this next one, and I'm like, okay, let's see here. We'll keep this handy. Center line vertical shift. This time we have one. My vertical shift is up one, so my center line goes there as well. There is no value directly in front of my sign, so my amplitude would just be one. No value right in front of X here, so my period, I'm being nice so far, the period hasn't moved, oh wait. But we have a phase shift. When you have your phase shift, include in there what direction you're moving. So since it's always the opposite, that's going to be going to the right. So I start doing my thing. I'm like, okay, period, that was normal again. for the time being. You're like, ooh, hardy. So let's, let's chat about this for a minute. So possibly before I make my points here, yes, I know this is going to be two pi. So I'm like, okay, so zero pi over two pi, three pi over two, two pi. But they're all being, because these are connected, my first two things, I have a phase shift. Okay, I have a horizontal shift of right pi over 4. So I need to add pi over 4 to all of these before I get myself too far in. I mean, I could put these and then shift them all, but, man, that's a lot of lines to keep track of. So remember, pi over 4 is just like adding a fourth. One half plus one fourth is three fourths. One fourth plus one would be five over four. At this point, I would hope you're seeing the pattern develop. One, three, five, seven, nine. Those are the values that should be showing up down here. Again, on that whole accuracy front. So our graph isn't going to be starting on the y-axis like it normally is. It's going to have shifted over the entire graph. So then I look back. I'm like, okay, amplitude and any vertical shift. So I'm like, okay, let's see here. So amplitude would put me at regular old 1. That's cool. But then every one of those points is going to be going up 1. So again, sine typically starts at zero, goes up, back down to the bottom, and goes here. But they're all moving up one. I'm even going to put my center line in this time here. There's my center line. So with sine, we started our center line, because these are all going up one. Go, ah! Don't do it, Hardy did. Don't do it kind of cover that so I don't con continue to do that. Up to the top, add one, add one, add one, add one. And work my way through. So again, it's easy to make the boo-boo like I do, and if I did, again, Grab a second color tomorrow, put it in with that, X out some things. It happens. It does. And then we can kind of work through that. Again, been nice so far on the period thing. Oh, wait, I spoke too soon. Cosine of 3X. Okay. We're not moving up or down. Amplitude isn't changing. Oh, period is, though. 2 pi over B. And why I put vertical shift in here twice, I, I couldn't even tell you. 
So the only thing I'm really having to mess with is the period this time. So two ways I can choose to tackle the period. I can either say, okay, I know it's going to end at 2 pi over 3, and I can play halvesies. Hey, what's in between 0 and 2 thirds? 1 third. Hey, what's in between 0 and 1 third? 1 sixth. 1 sixth, 2 sixths, 3 sixths, reduced of course, and 4 sixths reduced. That's one way you can go. The other way you would go, if you wanted to play the side game a little bit here, is you'd be like, okay, so here's my norm. Since my B value, we're going to divide by 3, or that also means you multiply by a third. Zero, pi over 6, pi over 3, 3 pi over 6, reduced, 2 pi over 3. They both get me to the same spot. And once I get there, life is easy because... There is nothing else I got to mess with. So as long as I keep straight cosine, starts at 1, center line, bottom, center line, top. And again, curvy people, not Vs. These are not absolute value graphs. I get that one knocked out. And then we save the big kahuna for last here. We're going to do all the things this time. So we might want this back. <coughs> Vertical shift. Up one. So our Y would be one. Amplitude is three. Period. My B value is pi. So two pi over B is two. And my phase shift is left two. So again, these go together. These go together. So my period's two. That's actually a really nice thing. Because basically all we're saying is, just like we saw here, the pies are going away. So instead of pi over 2, and yes, I'm remembering my phase shift. I am not forgetting it. You're like, okay, so this would be pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. But Hardy, I'm not doing it on those five. I'm moving them all left 2. Okay. So if I move 2 left 2, that's 0. 3 halves minus 2 is negative 1 half. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 1 half minus 2. You're like, so we're basically just taking all the numbers we had over here and putting negatives on them. Yeah, true statement. So we've got those taken care of. We're going to be working over here. So now my last game to play here is I've got an amplitude, so we're going to multiply by 3. We're going to do that first. Then we're going to move all those points up one. So again, whether you do it, I've had people do this. I haven't actually shown it, but I will now. If the amplitude was just three, you're like, okay, so sine, I'd be starting here. So zero times three would be three. It would, Hardy? No, it'd be zero. Okay. And then we go up one. Because again, zero. Multiply by three. Zero. Negative one. Zero. That would be my amplitude values. And then I'm just shifting all of them. Up one, up one, up one, up one, up one. So there's my values. Starting at negative 2, we're at 1, we're up to 4, we're back to 1, we're down to negative 2, and we're back to 1. The 
because on a sine graph, because I will have people sometimes be like, well, could I just do like 0, 3, 0, negative 3, 0, just with little points, and then just shift them all up one. As long as you remember, sure, that'd be okay. Not a bad plan at all. So side, your brain, plug a point, and then shift it up or down, they all work. And so basically, that's what you're looking at as far as the graphing part goes. Just basics, we have one, one big problem, but, but the rest of them are going to be pretty straightforward. So that's kind of where we're going to lead as far as that goes. Then, when you get to the non-graphing side, just a few reminders as we get here. Again, reference angle, different from coterminal. Reference angle is your nearest x-axis. You're just subtracting. 360 is my closest here. 360 minus 300 is 60 degrees. I'm done. I'm going to skip 6 for a moment. Negative 120. 180 is the closest. Reference angles are always positive, so kind of just ignore that negative. 180 minus 120 is still 60. That one's set. When you get to radians, do not give me degrees over here. So you're like, ooh, I don't like that very much. Okay, so here's your options. I mean, to me, I look at it and I go, okay, two-thirds is close to one. So one minus two-thirds is one-third, and I'm done. If that is not how your brain is working, that is okay. You always can say, well, one is close to two-thirds, and do one minus two-thirds and do it that way. But I do not want to say, oops, sorry about the glare. I do not want to see decimals. I do not want to see that being said 60 degrees, okay? Same here, 5 fourths, really close to 1. So 5 fourths minus 1, minus 4 fourths, don't lose your pi. Again, always positive, always nearest x-axis. And always start and finish in the same, degrees to degrees, radians to radians. Conversions, well, this has been a while. Convert each degree measure to radians and radians to degrees, okay? If I want degrees to disappear, whatever you want to disappear goes in the denominator. But please reduce. We don't put, we don't put the pi in the calculator, but it does stay till the end. And then here, same thing. If I want to get rid of pi, put pi down in the denominator. And get that situated. And then everything else is exact values. Now, when we get down into here, a couple of ways you can tackle this. I personally would try to keep working with reference angles and figuring out that way. Now, is it possible to bust out the unit circle that you have? It is, but it also, for the most part of these questions, has been purposefully set up between radians, tangent, negatives, that you're not just going to copy something directly off of here unless you're really thinking about it. So, for instance, sine of negative 135. If you're on your A game and you pull this out, you're like, okay, so negative 90, and another four. This is negative 135 right here, and I'm looking for sine, cosine, sine. I can literally take it off of here. But if I didn't, I'll still tell you how to go about it if you don't want to deal with that with the negatives. I'd look at this and I'd say, okay, I've got a reference angle of 45. So I'm looking for the sine of 45, which would be square root of 2 over 2. 
because I know that, because it's one of my six basic ones that I should have locked into my brain at this point. But then negative 135, all students, I'm in the tangent region. This isn't tangent. I'm done. So I don't care which route you go. You have the tools to do either. I mean, long term, this is probably the smarter thing to do. But again, sometimes we always think you know, short term. So cosecant of 150. Again, if you wanted to play here, okay, here's 150. Cosecant is the inverse of sine. Cosine, sine. Take the sine and flip it. My business. So as I'm doing these, I'm going to go back and forth between, you know, reference angle, Using the circle, reference angle, circle. Sine of negative 330. Reference is 30. Sine of 30. Sine goes smallest to biggest. That's one half. Where's negative 330 going to be? Uh, 180, 270. Negative 330 is over here in the all quadrant. So we're positive. So as I keep saying here, exact value, do not give me decimals of any sort, any type, any way. Hardy will lose his mind. Okay. Oh, negative pi over 3. Tangent of negative pi over 3. So we're looking for the tangent of negative 60. So you're like, okay. So negative 60. Here's, here's negative 60. So tangent, so tangent is sine divided by cosine. So I'm like, okay, so at this negative 60, sine is negative square root of 3 over 2. And cosine is 1 half, but if I'm dividing by 1 half, that's the same as multiplying by 2 over 1. So we'll just zap those. And I will admit one thing. The nice thing about using the unit circle is all the signs are going to be taken care of for you already. So you're not going to have to go back and think about it, what quadrant is it, because it's going to be done. Ooh, I'm just wondering when one of these is going to come up. Cotangent of a quadrantal. A quadrantal, again, means it's showing up on an axis. Okay, there's my 90, cosine and sine, so 0 and 1. But cotangent is the inverse of tangent. <coughs> so cosine, which is 0, would go up top. Sine, which is 1, would go down below. And 0 divided by 1 is 0. But if it was the other way around, and you're dividing by zero, that would be undefined, because we don't see that. And so as I keep kind of bopping along here, I'm like, okay, secant, it's the inverse of cosine. So the cosine of negative 300, so I'm like, okay, negative 300, let me work my way around, 90, 300, okay, here it is. So I want cosine. So one half, if I'm using my circle. But it's secant. So I need to take the inverse and get my answer that way. So unit circle, kind of handy. Let's go not unit circle. And you can keep going unit circle forever if you want to. Reference angle, 60. It's tangent. Sine of 60 over cosine of 60. So let's see here. Sine of 60, sine goes bottom least to greatest. So that would be the square root of 3 over 2. I got it right there too. Cosine of 60, just the opposite. But again, you're dividing by 1 half, which is the same as multiplying by 2. And negative 120... 
is here in quadrant number three, which is the tangent quadrant, so that gets to stay positive. And you're like, hallelujah, we are almost done with these, holy cow. But again, we're learning multiple ways to deal with it. We'll go quicker. Plug in 180 here. Tangent of 270. We're on a quadrantal again. So I'm like, all right, so let's see. Sine of 270 over cosine of 270. Okay, there's our 270. Cosine and sine. Zero and negative one. Negative one over zero. Uh-oh, can't do that. Do not just leave that tomorrow. I want to know if you know if that's undefined and not zero. So give me a UND, undefined, no solution, don't care. I just need to know that you know. Cosine, ooh, negative 3 over 2. Okay, so cosine of negative 270, otherwise known as the cosine of 90. Negative 90, negative 180, negative, whoops, 270, cosine and sine. Cosine is 0. Yeah, I like that one. That one was quick. And finally, cosine of 315. My reference angle would be 45. Any 45, whether it's cosine or sine, is square root of 2 over 2. 315 will put me in quadrant 4, which is the cosine quadrant. So that one's good to go. So exact values. Unit circle, awesome. Reference angle is awesome. Just make sure you get your signs right. And that this was a tricky one in the last quiz. I'm glad we're seeing this again. State what quadrant you're in if tangent is positive and cosine is negative. Well, if tangent is positive, tangent's got to be in one of those two. But cosine has to be negative. Cosine's not negative in quadrant one. So quadrant three it shall be. That's what you're looking for. Find a value of x where this is true. The sine of x is 1 half. Okay, well, I know that's true. I know the sine of 30 is 1 half. So is there another place that x could be more than 1 half? Now, this is where we got to be careful. Because if all I do is bust out my unit circle, and I'm like, okay, it's 1 half there, well, no, let's see. Oh, wait, right there. Right there, Hardy, 150. Yeah, that's, that's all I really have to do. Do not just put yes or no. Like, show me an example. You could even do a coterminal angle here. You could say sine of 390 equals 1 half. But, yeah, there's always going to be more than one place that it equals that value. And then I saved the easy for last. Using radians... Find the amplitude and period of each function. In other words, tell me the A value and then use the B to find the period. So seriously, your amplitude is just whatever number's tucked in front. Probably the easiest thing to ask in this entire quiz. But then don't just write 4 for the period. 2 pi over 4 or pi over 2. 2 pi over 2, or pi. 2 pi over 7, that doesn't mean reduce. 2 pi over 3, okay? If I'm remembering off the top of my head, I should have brought one with me. I believe the quiz is slightly shorter than this, but not a ton. So it's one of those things you, you do need to know what you're doing if you're going to get through because it's going to be a, it's going to be a one period quiz. But if you've worked enough with the unit circle and the exact values and done any of your graphing, okay, you, you should be in good shape as, as far as that goes. So I will get...